Marley was dead. Scrooge knew that he was dead. Of course he did. How could it be otherwise? Scrooge and he were partners for—I don't know how many years. There is no doubt that Marley was dead. This must be distinctly understood, or nothing wonderful can come of the story I am going to relate. Scrooge never painted out old Marley's name. There it stood years afterwards above the warehouse door, Scrooge and Marley. Once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting-house. It was a cold, bleak, biting weather. Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Ah, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas? What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come, then. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Ah, humbug. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Good afternoon. But I have made the trial in homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So, a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. There's another fellow. My clerk, with fifteen shillings a week, and a wife and family, talking about a merry Christmas. I'll retire to Bedlam. Scrooge Marley, Sabali, have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge, or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. We have no doubt his liberality is well represented by his surviving partner. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the Union workhouses, are they still in operation? They are. Still, I wish I could say they were not. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the establishments I have mentioned. They cost enough, and those who are badly off must go there. Many can go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Besides, excuse me, I don't know that. But you might know it. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose? If quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. And yet, you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. 
"'But I suppose you must have the whole day. "'Be here all the earlier next morning.' Fifteen shillings. Fifteen shillings. Fifteen shillings. Ah, Hamburg. 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 I won't believe it. How now? What do you want with me? Much. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? You're particular for a shade. In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you... Can you sit down? I can. Do it then. You don't believe in me. Humbug, I tell you. Humbug. <laughs> Mercy. Dreadful apparition. 
Why do you trouble me? Man of the worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? I do. I must, but why do spirits walk the earth? And why do they come to me? You will be haunted by three spirits. Uh, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. Uh, couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? Expect the second on the next night at the same hour. The third upon the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to see me no more, and look that, for your own sake, you remember what has what passed, passed between, between us. us. Are you the spirit, sir, whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Rise and walk with me. I am a mortal, unliable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand there, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Good heaven! Oh, I was bred in this place. I was a boy here. Your lip is trembling. And what is that upon your cheek? You recollect the way? I could walk it blindfold. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years. Let us go on. These are but shadows of the things that have been. They have no consciousness of us. The school is not quite deserted. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, is left there still. Poor boy. I wish... But it's too late now. What is the matter? Nothing. Nothing. There was a child singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should have liked to have given something, that's all. Let us see another Christmas. Dear, dear brother, I have come to bring you home, dear brother. To bring you home, home, home. Home, little fan. We're to be together all the Christmas long and have the merriest time in the world. Always a delicate creature whom a breath might have withered, but she had a large heart. So she had. You're right, I will not gainsay it, spirit. God forbid. She died a woman and had, as I think, children. One child. True. Your nephew. Yes. Well, I apprenticed here. Why, it's old Fezziwig. Bless his heart, it's Fezziwig alive again. Oh, oh, my boys. No more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas Ebenezer. Well done. matters little, to you very little. Another idol has displaced me, 
and if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to, I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? This is the even-handed dealing of the world. There is nothing on which it is so hard as poverty, and there is nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. Our contract is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so, until in good season we could improve our worldly fortune by our patient industry. You are changed. When it was made, you were another man. I was a boy. Your own feeling tells you that you were not what you are. I am. That which promised happiness when we were one in heart is fraught with misery now that we are two. Spirit, show me no more. Conduct me home. I do delight to torture me. One shadow more. No more. No more. I don't wish to see it. Show me no more. And I release you with a full heart for the love of him you once were. You may... The memory of what is past half makes me hope you will have pain in this. A very, very brief time, and you will dismiss the recollection of it, gladly as an unprofitable dream from which it happened well that you awoke. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. <laughs> come in, come in and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Is there a peculiar flavor in what you sprinkle from your torch? There is, my own. Spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I learned a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. Ooh. What has ever got your precious father, then? And your brother, Tiny Tim? And Martha weren't as late last Christmas Day by half an hour. Here's Martha, Mother. Here's Martha, Mother. Hurrah! There's such a goose, Martha. Well, oh, bless your heart alive, my dear. How late you are. We had a deal of work to finish up last night. And had to clear away this morning, Mother. Well, never mind, so long as you are come. Sit you down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm, Lord bless you. No, no, there's father coming. There's father coming. Hide, Martha, hide. Hide. What? Where's our Martha? Not coming. Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? And how did little Tim behave? As good as gold, and better. Somehow he gets thoughtful sitting by himself so much and thinks the strangest things you ever heard. He told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple and it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day. Who made lame beggars walk and blind men see? A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Mr. Scrooge, I'll give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'll give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure. On which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day? I'll drink his health for your sake and the days. Not for his. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. 
Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat. In the poor chimney corner, and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, no. Oh no, kind spirit, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race will find him here. What then? If he be like to die, he had better do it, and decrease the surplus population. Man, if man you be in heart, not adamant, forbear that wicked cant until you have discovered what the surplus is, and where it is. What place is this? <laughs> he said that Christmas was a humbug as I live. He believed it too. More shame for him, Fred. He's a comical old fellow. That's the truth. And not so pleasant as he might be. However, his offenses carry their own punishment. And I have nothing to say against him. I am sure he is very rich, Fred. At least you always tell me so. What of that, my dear? His wealth is of no use to him. He don't do any good with it. He don't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't the satisfaction of thinking <laughs> that he's ever going to benefit us with it. I have no patience with him. Oh, I have. I'm sorry for him. I mean to give him the same chance every year, whether he likes it or not. For I pity him. He may rail at Christmas till he dies, but he can't help thinking better of it. I defy him. If he finds me going there in good temper, year after year, and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? If it only puts him in the vein to leave his poor clerk fifty pounds, that's something. And I think I shook him yesterday. Here is a new game. One half hour spirit, only one. I have found it out. I know what it is, Fred. I know what it is. What is it? It's your Uncle Scrooge. He's given us plenty of merriment, I am sure. And it would be ungrateful not to drink his health. Here is a glass of mulled wine ready to our hand at the moment. And I say, Uncle Scrooge. Well, Uncle, Uncle Scrooge. Scrooge. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man, whatever he is. Our spirit's lives so short. The time is drawing near. Forgive me if I am not justified in what I ask, but I see something strange and not belonging to yourself protruding from your skirts. Is it a foot or a claw? It might be a claw, for the flesh there is upon it. Look here. Oh man, look here. Look, look down here. Spirit, are they yours? They are man's, and they cling to me, appealing from their fathers. This boy is ignorance, this girl is want. Beware them both, and all of their degree. Have they no refuge or resource? Are there no prisons? Are there are no there workhouses? There I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that so, spirit? Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any spectre I have seen. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company, and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? Lead on, lead on. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me. I know. Lead on, spirit. No, I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why? What was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. Oh, God knows. What has he done with his money? I haven't heard. 
Left it to his company, perhaps. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. I'm not at all sure that I wasn't his most particular friend. For we used to stop and speak whenever we met. hope yet, Carolyn. He's not only very ill, but dying then. To whom will our debt be transferred? I don't know. We may sleep tonight with light hearts, Carolyn. How are you? How are you? Well, old Scratch has got his own at last, hey? So I am told. Cold, isn't it? Seasonable for Christmas time. You're not a skater, I suppose. No, no. Something else to think of. Good morning. Let the charwoman alone to be the first. Let the laundress alone to be the second. And let the undertaker's man alone to be the third. Ha <laughs> ha! This is the end of it, you see. He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Spirit, I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heaven, what is this? Spirit, this is a fearful place. In leaving it, I shall not leave its lesson. Trust me, let us go. I understand you, and would do it if I could. But I have not the power. Spirit, I have not the power. Is there any person in the town who feels emotion caused by this man's death? Show that person to me, Spirit, I beseech you. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. The colour hurts my eyes. They're better now again. It makes them weak by candlelight. And I wouldn't show weak eyes to your father when he comes home for the world. It must be near his time. Past it, rather. But I think he has walked a little slower than he used these last few evenings, Mother. I've known him walk with... I've known him walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder, very fast indeed. And so have I. Often. And so have I. But he was very light to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble. And there is your father at the door. Sunday. You went today then, Robert. Yes, my dear. I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place it is. But you will see it often. I promised him that I would walk there on a Sunday. My little, little child. My little child. Spectre. Something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. Tell me, what man was that whom we saw lying dead? This court, through which we hurry now, is where my place of occupation is, and has been for a length of time. I see the house. Let me behold what I shall be in days to come. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Oh, tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Oh, no, spirit. Oh, oh no, no. no. <laughs> I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob Marley, heaven and the Christmas time be praised for this. I say it on my knees, old Jacob, on my knees. 
They're not torn down. They're not torn down. Rings and all, they are here. I'm here. The shadows of the things that would have been may be dispelled. They will be. I know they will. I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. A merry Christmas to everybody. A happy new year to all the world. Hello here. Oh, hello. There's the saucepan that the gruel was in. There's the door by which the ghost of Jacob Marley entered. There's the corner where the ghost of Christmas present sat. There's the window where I saw the wandering spirits. It's all right. It's all true. It all happened. <laughs> I don't know what day of the month it is. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Hello. <laughs> Hello here. What's today? Eh? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? Why, Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the poulterers in the next street but one, at the corner? I should hope I did. <laughs> An intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prized turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prized turkey, the big one. What, the one as big as me? What a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, Rebuck. It's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it. Walk care. No, no. I'm in earnest. Go and buy it and tell them to bring it here that I may give them the direction where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. Whoa! I'll send it to Bob Fatties. He shan't know who sent it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Joe Miller never made such a joke as sending it to Bob's will be. I shall love it as long as I live. I scarcely ever looked at it before. What an honest expression it has in its face. It's a wonderful knocker. Ah, here's the turkey. Whoa, hello. Whoa. How are you? Merry Christmas. But why? It's impossible to carry that to Camden Town. You must have a cab. Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs> Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. My dear sir, how do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. It was very kind of you. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, that is my name, and I fear it may not be pleasant to you. Allow me to ask your pardon, and will you have the goodness? Lord bless me. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please. Not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favour? My dear sir, I don't know what to say to such munify. Don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will you come and see me? I will. Thank you. I'm much obliged to you. I thank you fifty times. Bless you. Is your master at home, my dear? Nice girl. Very. Yes, sir. Uh, Fred? Why, bless my soul! Who's that? It's I, your Uncle Scrooge. Uh, I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? Hello. 
What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I am very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. You are? Yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you please. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. Now, I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, and therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. A Merry Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary, and endeavour to assist your struggling family, and we will discuss your affairs this very afternoon, over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop. Bob, make up the fires, and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them. For he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good, at which some people did not have their fill of laughter in the outset, and knowing that such as these would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes in grins, as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards, and it was always said of him, that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, every one. God bless us, every one. Can you go higher at the end? Yeah, it's okay for now. I want to see it on the yeah, flat. So try it once more. Let's do it. Here we go. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Cut. I guess it's okay. It looks pretty good. Merry Christmas? What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then. What right have you to be dismal? Yep. <laughs> and get the drummer. Right, guys, let's keep it quiet around set, please. Thank you. You're rich enough. Bah. 